In this video, I'm going to describe how to follow up a statistically significant omnibus interaction effect that has more than two levels associated with at least one of your independent variables. So if you had only a 2x2 two two mixed design ANOVA, you wouldn't have to follow up with the procedures I'm going to describe here, except for possibly the Cohen's D estimates that you'd want to report associated with each level across one of the independent variables. But I'll get to that in a minute. So this is a 2x3 mixed design ANOVA, and the interaction effect was identified as statistically significant with an f of 5.007, p equal 0 0.009, or 0 0.015 if you consult the Hünfeldt adjustment, and the partial a to squared is equal to 0.128. In the textbook, I depicted the interaction in a plot of means such that you can see that the trend downwards in anxiety across the CBT and discussion therapy groups is not parallel, so it's not surprising that there was a significant interaction that was identified in the ANOVA. The challenge now is to follow that up and identify exactly where the interaction is taking place. And I mentioned in the textbook that a method to follow up the omnibus interaction effect is with a series of smaller 2x2 two two mixed design ANOVAs. So you do one 2x2 two two mixed design ANOVA just for pretest and post test. And then you do one for post test and follow up. And then you do a final third one with the pretest means and the follow up means. It's possible that a statistically significant 2x2 two two interaction will be observed only for one of these three possible 2x2s. Two and if that's the case, it simplifies the story to describe the nature of the interaction. So now I'm going to conduct those 2x2s two to see which one or ones are statistically significant. So go into SPSS, click Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. I've got three here from a number of levels in the time factor. I need to change that to two. Go into Define. I've got pretreatment and post-treatment, because I've already run this analysis as a two by three. If you didn't, you would have your variables all in the variable box here. But because I did the analysis, they're already here. Pretreatment and post-treatment, that's going to be the first one. I'm going to be analyzing these data, pretest, post-test. Pretest and post-test are synonymous with pretreatment and post-treatment. I just wrote pretest and post-test in the chart because it saves space. So I'm going to first test this here. My hunch is, is that there's going to be a significant effect here because the lines are crisscrossing. This is a disordinal type of interaction. Probably going to be happening here. Let's check it out. I'm going to plot the means put group into separate lines and time horizontal axis yes I'm not going to include the 95% confidence intervals but you could if you wanted to click continue and click OK so now it's running the 2x2 two two mixed design ANOVA as a follow-up the assumption of equality of covariance matrices is satisfied because the p-value is greater than 0.05 or greater than 0.005 if you trust Huberty and Potowski now go down to the tests of within subjects effects and you can see the time by group effect was identified as statistically significant. F equal 15.93, P less than 0 0.001 and a partial a to squared of 0 0.319. So isolating just at this portion of the 2 by 3 I observed a statistically significant effect and so the change in the means going from pretest to post test the magnitude of the change is not equal between CBT and discussion. And in fact, the dotted line is going down at a steeper rate than the discussion group. In fact, the discussion group looks like they haven't changed much at all from pretest to post test. So this is a supportive finding for the efficacy of cognitive behavioral therapy based on the Weatherall et al. study data. Before I carry on with a little bit more analyses at this level, isolating at pretest post test, I'm going to test this 2x2 two two, and then I'm going to test the final 2x2 two two to see if I have any more work to do after that. So next, analyze general linear model repeated measures. I want to keep two levels, but now I want to throw out... Now I want to isolate post-treatment and follow-up. So put that in there. Everything else stays the same. So what I'm going to look at is the 2x2 two two isolating at post-test and follow-up. What do I get? Click OK. Assumption of equality of covariance matrices is satisfied, P 0.267, it's greater than 0.05. And the test of within subjects effects, 
not statistically significant. The time by group interaction, F 0.657, P equal 0.423, and partial eta squared 0 0.019. So although these means the pattern of the changes is not exactly the same, they're not parallel, they're not sufficiently different to be identified as statistically significant. So I would not say that there's a statistically significant interaction taking place here. So I don't have anything to talk about with respect to the interaction at this level of the within subjects factor post-test to follow up. The final analysis is going to be pre-test to follow up. So let's look at that. Analyze general linear model, repeated measures, keep that at two, define, throw those out. It's pre-treatment and follow up. This is the third and last one and click OK. And boxes tests of equality covariance matrices is satisfied and tests of within subjects effects time by group interaction also not statistically significant F 3.383 and P equal 0 0.075 and so perhaps surprisingly the interaction is not observed comparing pretest to follow-up so if you had just the lines here in fact I've got the chart there let's go back to the bottom of this this is what is being depicted if you, th if you ignored these means here, this is what it would look like. Let me just change this a little bit to make it nicer. So we've got, this is pre-test and this is follow-up, one and two. Numerically, there is a difference in the magnitude of the change comparing CBT to discussion group therapy. It's just not identified as statistically significant. Now, it was kind of close the p-value was 0 0.075, so it was kind of close, but it wasn't statistically significant. So this suggests that by follow-up, CBT and discussion have basically matched each other. They're, the efficacy of discussion group therapy is about equal to CBT at follow-up, but it wasn't pre-test to post-test. So in layperson terms, I'd probably interpret these results to suggest that cognitive behavioral therapy and discussion group therapy work about the same once you get the follow-up but CBT achieves its results sooner so CBT goes down quite quickly from pretest to post-test but then it plateaus conversely discussion group therapy pretest to post-test not much change but at follow-up there is so the interaction effect is isolated with respect to statistical significance at pretest and post-test. So the last thing you'd want to do is you'd want to calculate Cohen's D for just the CBT group pretest to post-test and also pretest to post-test for the discussion group. So you'd have to go back to the 2 by 2 where that was looked at in order to get the means and standard deviations. So this is pretreatment and post-treatment 44.94 and 25.33 those are the two means here and then we've got 35.60 and 35.80. Very similar means. Those are those two means there. So I want to calculate Cohen's D here and Cohen's D here. And that's easy enough. I just have to calculate the average of the standard deviations. 20.38 plus 22.713 divided by 2. And that gives 21.55 rounded. And then the difference between the means, 44.94 and 25.33. Again, that's, this compares, that's the comparison between these two means. 44.94 minus 25.33 equals 19.61. And that divided by the average of the standard deviations is 0.91. So Cohen's D is estimated at 0.91 for the difference between these two means. And now I need to calculate it for this one. To be honest, I know it's going to be something like 0 0.01. So discussion and discussion standard deviations, 25.3 plus 27.201 divided by 2, 26.25. And the difference between the means, which is minute, 35.60 minus 35.80 is negative 0.2 and that yields a Cohen's D of 
negative 0 0.01 rounded. So the Cohen's d here is 0.91, and the Cohen's d here is negative 0 0.01. You could calculate Hedges g if you wanted to be a little bit more accurate. The 2 by 2 isolated at this level implies that the magnitude of the difference between these two means is larger than the magnitude of the difference between two, these two means. In fact, you'd also have to think of the direction. This one was slightly negative in terms of a Cohen's d, and this one was positive. Irrespective, the notion is that the magnitude of the change is either more substantial or in the opposite direction than the other effect for the other level of the between group subjects factor. So that is how I evaluated this interaction. I had the 2 by 3, which was statistically significant. I followed up with a series of 2 by 2s, three of them, and I found only between pretest and posttest was the interaction I uh, observed at. And then I did the Cohen's D's to really drive the point home and inform the reader, potentially, of the nature of the change. Cognitive behavioral therapy works much more quickly than discussion group therapy. But by the time you get to follow up, there's no statistically significant effect, at least in this study.